My name is Andrew Charles. I'm a professor of neurology at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. People are shocked when they hear the numbers about how many people are suffering from migraine worldwide. And um, the fact that it's highly variable, you know, for some people it's occasional and easily managed with current therapies. But what's so astonishing um, when you sit in our shoes in the, or in our chair, I should say, in the clinic, is how many people across the country are devastated by this problem. And I think that's something that is important for people to understand. It's really been in the shadows, I think, um, for a variety of reasons, but it's something that I think it's, it's time for it to really be brought forward as the kind of public health issue that it really is. We just see people from every single walk of life having migraine and um, you know certainly it's most more common in women and more common in women of reproductive ages but um, you know practically speaking again we see uh, young kids who are incapacitated we see older folks who are incapacitated so it really is a problem that is a kind of equal opportunity disabler it really uh, affects everyone there's often this kind of um, suspicion that somehow people are embellishing this or that there's uh, they're not experiencing terrible pain um, and and again when you can't see it on a scan or measure it in terms of a physical parameter that's very challenging for patients it really is only recently that we're uh, understanding that this is a, a really dramatic um, disorder that involves you know multiple parts of the nervous system uh, in the past it was thought that it was just a blood vessel problem where there's constriction and dilation of blood vessels but now that we can actually see these um, again very dramatic changes in brain function in migraine patients we're, we're finally being able to put forward a picture of what's happening so that you know, physicians and patients can understand uh, that this is not just something that is, you know, in their head, uh, but really is, is, is um, a disorder that's characterized by a lot of impressive changes in the nervous system. We take a very multidisciplinary approach. I have a laboratory that does basic research in mechanisms of migraine, and we try and actually apply things that we learn in the laboratory to our care of patients and conversely we actually take things that we learn from patients back to the laboratory to try and see if we can understand uh, better the basic mechanisms of migraine. So it's kind of a bi-directional communication between the lab and the clinic. Our laboratory involves really very basic work uh, where we're looking at cells and, uh, and looking at mice that express migraine genes, for example, to see if we can better understand the problem and then also you know, develop new therapies based on a more fundamental understanding of it. Education is important, so education of patients, education of colleagues. So. Um, traditionally, migraine has been a, a topic that hasn't received much attention in medical education, which is kind of amazing given how common and how disabling it is. Clinical research, you know, it's important to try out things in patients uh, that we're learning. We're doing some interesting monitoring studies where we're trying to uh, identify whether there are uh, changes in people's symptoms. Um, or how they feel in the hours leading up to a headache so that they may, may then be able to better treat the attack uh, if they can uh, catch it earlier in the process. So really you know, being able to take an individual patient and figure out what's the best approach you know, given their symptoms and then given their lifestyle or, um, and their life in general. Making sure that people understand that you know, not every treatment is the same for every patient and then you just have to um, you know, tailor the treatment to the, to the individual. There's a growing interest in what's called precision medicine where um, the idea is that you take a patient and you study their genes or, their, or do blood tests or do other sorts of what we call phenotyping where you figure out what, how the patient's presenting and then provide therapy that is specific to that individual. It's not simply a headache, that it's a constellation of um, symptoms and changes in the central and peripheral nervous system that are creating a broad picture of, of a problem. 
Um, and so really you know, making it clear that the, the headache is only um, really a small part of, of the problem.